Okay, so uh, this is really exciting. I'm speaking in the name of uh, two more people that are not here because uh, they're somewhere else. This uh, talk is actually done by... Uh, yeah, yeah. See what I did there? Okay, so... Uh, Raziel, my colleague at Argus, he did most of the SDR work, the radio work. Shir helped us with uh, signals intelligence, analyzing the signals. And this is me in the back. And this is an IKEA clothes hanger uh, that will come back later. So the first question is why, why am I applying to the CFF? Because, you know, I'm a public speaker. I usually apply to the regular track. Well, that's a funny story. Uh, turns out that as I was uh, talking to Alex over Twitter and asking him, why, why can't I do the CFP? And he says, well, dude, the CFP is over. And this kind of, you know, resonates the first speaker who mentioned that, <laughs> right? Now, that's, that's a big, <laughs> that's a big oops. And, and it gets even worse because I could come up with any number of reasons of why I missed the CFP date, right? Except I'm on the CFP committee. <laughs> so, yeah, fail. So th this is how we begin, all right? Okay. Next. Uh, so TPMS, a little bit about TPMS, background. TPMS is the tire pressure measurement system. It's this little device that sits inside the tire and tells you how much pressure there is. It's good for any number of things. None of them is important for the 10 minutes that I have. <laughs> uh, it's, it's a subject that has already been researched extensively. And pretty much anyone who researched it got to the same conclusion, it's not dangerous. The worst thing that you can do, because the signal is not encrypted, the worst thing that you can do is <clears throat> spoof a signal that tells you that you're out of air, so someone is just going to pull over. Um, and maybe on tires that have self-inflation, that might overinflate them. But basically, the potential for danger is very small. And of course, come on. Challenge accepted. Like, what did you think would happen, right? Okay, so we started. We got influenced by this little video. That, that, that's not funny. That's a good, very good commercial telling you basically not to text and drive. And we were thinking, <clears throat> if we can cause this distraction, but not for just one driver, but many drivers at the same time, now then we might have something to work with. So uh, we were looking forward. This, uh, the Kaspersky Security Summit was going to happen in April 2019, and we rushed to uh, apply on uh, December there was only one problem. We only had an abstract. We didn't actually research it yet. And, <laughs> and, and we figured, well, it's December and the conference is in April, four months. Oh, we got to do this in four months. It's a piece of cake, right? Uh, well, <laughs> not, not so much, um, but that's a different story. Uh, the plan was very simple. If you're looking at one vehicle, what you want to do is receive the TPMS signal, you want to analyze and parse it. It has different fields. One of them is the tire pressure. Another one is the CRC. You want to modify them and then retransmit. This constitutes the spoofing of the TPMS signal for one wheel. But we wanted to do it at scale. So what we would need to do is position multiple receivers because the, the TPMS, it doesn't transmit all the time. It's like every 60, 60 seconds or something like that. So we figured we take a long piece of road, put many receivers, collect the signal, and then just burst it all at one time. So it looks a little bit like this. Uh, where is Klaus? You should recognize the bridge. All right. 
This is the bridge between Denmark and Sweden. And uh, imagine taking this RTL SDR, which costs about $9 on eBay. You put nine of those, eight of those receiving, and then one transmitting device, in this case, Yardstick 1, which has a Python API, and you need to transmit here, right before the gate into the tunnel. So if you manage to distract enough people driving at 120 kilometers an hour at the same time, maybe one or two of them will take the eyes off the road and veer with the car, and when you do it inside the tunnel, then it's no longer harmless. That was the idea. And the result, failure, of course, otherwise I wouldn't be standing here. Now, the reason that we failed is because we chose to reinvent the wheel. I mentioned that the subject was researched many, many times, but we decided that we wanted a learning experience because this was something we hadn't played with before. So we said, we're, we're not going to use other people's work. We're going to do it ourselves. And the result was that this wasted a lot of time. This is why, by the way, when April came, we still hadn't succeeded. And I was revolutionizing the Kaspersky SAS conference by giving a fuck-up talk, which they did not expect or solicit, but they got one anyway. So, <laughs> so yeah, that worked well. Uh, so here's a really one of the best examples of why we failed. This is Laziel on the ground. This is my car, and this is a computer with the receiver. We sat in the underground parking garage of the building we work at for hours. I'm talking like four or five hours trying to get the signal. And it didn't work very well. Sometimes we had a good signal. Sometimes we didn't have a good signal. Sometimes we had a signal, but it wasn't TPMS. And we were getting really upset about that. And at some point, we said, OK, we're going to give it up. We're going to take the shortcut, take the tire off, look at the TPMS sensor, and get the FCC ID. And then you can get all the uh, information, right? Only my car doesn't have TPMS. <laughs> So, yeah. Ima imagine our surprise. <laughs> Fail. Eventually, we found someone with a card that did have a TPMS, and we wasted so, many, so much time, so we got the photo, and this is what it looks like, okay? Another thing we tried, uh, this is a directional antenna. It's specific for this frequency. We put it on the clothes hanger at the office because we're right over the highway. Uh, and it didn't work because apparently 36 floors are too much. Uh, so we had to actually go. And I was sitting next to the highway, listening to signals, and that went well. We also tried building our own parsing because it was a learning experience. If anyone of you has ever played with the GNU Radio Companion, it's a nightmare. It only partly worked. That, of course, luckily was not my part of the research. That was Raziel's. Uh, but still. And then eventually we got some bits. But now you have to decode them. And then we had another problem. Who recognizes this? This is Manchester, the city. So there was Manchester encoding, which we missed. And uh, eventually <laughs> that took another week out of the time. But eventually that also worked. We even tried the bench setup. We had a transmitting device connected by wire to the receiving device. Everything worked well. But then when we went outside the lab, it did not work. So there's a lot of voodoo in this thing. And then finally, we said, OK, enough time spent. Let's take the FCC information. We got the signal. Finally, we could receive it. We could parse it. This is, these are the bits. Uh, these are the parameters that we were missing. This is why we, we didn't get it in the first place. And then we tried transmitting again, and again we failed. And this, I would like to attract your attention to researcher A's laptop. I'm researcher A. It did not work. It just failed to work. And the reason is voodoo. There's no other reason. <laughs> because when we switched my computer with Brazil's computer, and they are both MacBook Airs, and all the processing is done on the Yardstick 1. It's not even on the computer. On his computer, it worked. It's like a one Python script. That's it. We don't know what happened, but it worked for him. And this is the result. OK, ready? This is yep. inside the car, and this is me. Start now. OK, awesome. Whee! OK, so eventually it worked. So what is the message? Failure is an option. It's part of the process. 
Not only that, when you tell people about your research and you just tell them what you did, they don't know how you got there, what you did before, and they can't learn about the process of being a researcher. Giving people textbook answers will not make them smarter. It will just give them a shortcut, and then eventually they will fail somewhere else. So share the information. And as Angie mentioned, is he here? Is Angie here? Angie gave this talk here two years ago. He talked about that. So share your failures and don't be afraid to fail. Thank you. This went over time. <laughs>